Let's talk a little bit about different ways that you could actually connect parts together. This isn't comprehensive, it's just going to hit a couple of uh, highlighted features, but they're critical in our estimates of things like average shear stress in a particular component. So for instance here we got two overlapping um, pieces that are put together with a, a bolt. We don't show the nut here on this end just for clarity. And one of the problems that you have there is that these two forces as you're pulling on them are offset from each other and that means there's going to be a rotational effect and we may not like that very well. right? And generally we, we don't. Um, so what you can do is you can put two pieces overlapping the other one, sandwiching the other one. And so that will mean that whatever this force is here, it's going to be then divided equally amongst those two. And then when you're loading it up, you have a nice uh, set of symmetry and this thing doesn't rock back and forth. But what it also means is, note what I said, that this total force here is going to get halved in this case. That means that the shear force going through this plane, called the shear plane, is not as big as it would have been up here. In fact, it's going to be half. Right? And the more layers that you put in here, the more planes that you have, then the more reduced the overall effect is going to be. Right? And so that's a good thing. You just When you do the analysis, you've got to keep track of all those little bits and pieces about how many shear planes you've got because it's going to reduce how much shear force is going through the one little micro component of the, uh, uh, the device. Here's another case of a situation like this. Right, This is how it would really potentially happen. You have one piece that has the little tendon, the one piece that's out here, that then slides into the slot, and then we have a pin that goes through, and that pin then is going to be like this bolt up here. We've got two of those um, tongues are coming out here, one groove, two tongues, and therefore you end up with, in effect, what we call double shear. It will decrease the amount of the stress by half because the shear force going through is going to go down. Right? And you can also do that by increasing the number of uh, bolts or pins you have as well. There's a lot of different ways you can design uh, that connection. On the next page you see same kind of situation, real world situation where you've got then just one piece going through and then the other one though is forked and you've got what amounts to being double shear there. Another example uh, in real application on that side. Uh, this is where we have two beams coming together, a lot of big heavy plates on the flange at the upper part, and then the web down here. We don't know if there's a web plate on both sides or not, not shown in this drawing, but the flange has two plates on either side. As we see the same thing in the column, um, we've got a column splice here, two columns being formed together. That's what you see over here uh, to the side, by the way and you've got web plates and you've got flange plates and these bolts then are in have multiple shear planes. Uh, down below you see also a beam splice that would go something along uh, the lines. These are not exactly matched. Uh, this is conceptual schematic and this is of course uh, a real one that we see down below. Right, so that's how we um, have multiple shear planes and do things that uh, help us to carry the total amount of force and then the stress effects that come along with that.